استعد للموت قبل النزول الموت prepare for death before death comes to you he said and do not allow your eyes to constantly gaze at that which we have granted the disbelievers from the worldly life and its joys and its bliss in that which we have caused to be a trial for them and the provision of your Lord is that which is better and more everlasting Imam as he says so he said do not allow your eyes to be cast upon the worldly life and this is the problem this is the problem you don't have a problem organizing your time going to gym going to work you never miss that there is no reason the servant of Allah Azawajal, misses the prayer well there's no reason there is not a fathomable reason the purpose of our creation we are not fulfilling it the obedience to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are lagging behind there is no reason except that we have been touched with something from the love of this worldly life and we began to forget that which is with Allah so he said subhanahu wa ta'ala do not allow your eyes to gaze upon that which they have and certainly he says here not only you're not allowed to look at it he says don't be from those that continually look at the worldly life mustahsinan ila ahwali dunya wal mutamatti'ina biha that you look at the joys and the bliss of the worldly life and those who are enjoying it now person might say to him himself what's wrong with that which is halal this is what you hear all the time nobody's making haram that which allah has made halal the problem is when you sat there on that instagram when you sat there on that snapchat on that tiktok big bot madari mahu wasting your life looking at these people it had an effect upon you it cut you off from your reality and he says it here so when you looked at them repeatedly in their joy and their bliss and in their luxury and you looked at those that were enjoying what they were enjoying look what imam al said what is it they are not to look at he said so do not look at that which they have he said do not look at that delicious food he said do not look at those luxurious clothes those houses that they have that are beautified and those women that are beautified he said don't look at them and don't repeat in your looking at them because this is merely the joy of the worldly life and nobody is deceived by it other than these people and it's these people that have been deceived and he says nobody was taken to constantly looking at those things except he was from those that were deceived by them so he desired them and when he desired them what happened it eventually cut him off from the hereafter and he was from those individuals Allah Ta'ala Musta'an that oppressed themselves and he said and how quickly all of that it leaves and is left behind how quickly all of that will come to an end and in reality it will be the cause and the reason of their death and you could even say they're murder because it kills a person loving the worldly life not being from those that strive for the hereafter it will kill you before you realize it because from the hearts of those that are living full of iman full of taqwa and full of ibadah and from amongst the hearts are those that are full full of that which is and from deception and reality and he described what is that reality he said it was nothing but a trial for them so he made it subhanahu wa ta'ala a trial then he said so all of those things will not benefit you when you will be brought forth to stand in front of Allah yawm al qiyamah and Allah made it as a trial and a test for the people. Naam. He says, وَلِيَعْلَمْ مَنْ يَقِفْ عِنْدَهَا وَيَغْتَرُّ بِهَا In order that he may make known those that stopped at the worldly life and his joys and his glitters. And he was deceived by them. And then he said, And it is that day. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوْتَ لَا بِاللَّهِ حَيْثُ لَا تَنْفَعْ النِّدَامَةِ is the day where no form of regret will be able to save you and that's why he described it they will come to an end and he said something amazing subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rizqu rabbika and the provision of your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is better 
And he said that the provision of your Lord is two things. He says, Min al ilmi wal iman. Is to have knowledge of the deen of Allah and then to have iman. And then he topped off by saying, Wa haqaiqu a'mal is saliha. A naturalization and reality of righteous good deeds. That is the immediate reward of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and provision. As for the provision that has not yet come, then is the provision of the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jalla that do not come to an end in paradise. And then the servant will live the good life. Right next to his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful Jalla Jalalu. And he mentioned it and described it to be khayr. He said, this is better than that which they have from the Kathrat of Fajra, both in its description and in its reality. And it's abaqa, is that which lasts longer. Wala hawla wala quwata billah. And for that reason it was said, Inna lillahi ibadan futana, taraku dunya wa khafu al-fitana, nazaru fiha falamma alimu, annaha laysa li hayin watana, ja'alu, ja'aluha lujjatan, وَاتَّخَذُوا صَالِحَ الْأَعْمَالِ فِيهَا سُفُنَا That the poet said that to Allah Azawajal belongs the most clever of servants. They looked at the worldly life and they feared its temptations. They looked at it and they realized that this is a place without doubt you cannot survive in because you're not from here. This is not your home. Your home is the Akhirah. Your home is where Adam descended from. Your home is that which Allah Azawajal promised the muttaqeen is that which he promised the people of taqwa is that abode that he promised the prophets the siddiqeen the righteous and the martyrs alike so they made this worldly life to them and they took it upon its reality that it's lujjatan it's like a barrier that is before them that is unpassable it's like an ocean you could say and when they saw that they made their righteous good deeds a vessel in which they're able to sail right over this ocean this ocean of temptation and return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there appears that narration of Ibn Umar, although it has some weaknesses, meaning is absolutely correct. The man he asked, Ay mu'min afdal, who is the best of the believers? And it was said, Ahsanuhum khuluqa, the best of them in manners. Then it was said, Fa ayu mu'min akyas, and who is the cleverest of the servants? And it was said, those that remember Allah, they remember death the most. And it was said, and after that is the one who perfected his preparation for what is after death. These are the cleverest of the servants. And Mubarak Furi, Ta'ala, he mentioned in the Simna narration, that he said, Al Kays, Mandana Nafsa, the clever servant is the one that brings himself to account. Wa Amila Lima Bad Lima Bad and he performs and he works hard and strives for that which is after death. And it's true. And in some of the sub narrations he said, Hasabu and Fusahum. They brought themselves to account. Kabla and to Hasabu. He was said, Hasibu and Fusakum. Bring yourselves to account before you are brought to account. Then they said, And beautify yourselves. Adorn yourselves for that ultimate presentation. When you will be presented in front of Allah. Jalla Jalalu. Wear the best of garment that you can wear in this life. So perhaps you will wear it in the hereafter and be honored. And it was said. That the best of garment. Is the talk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.